rebelstrip.net and 10 minute test drive. We're behind the wheel of the Audi TT RS. Very excited to drive this and in the week we've been driving it, it's been amazing. Now there are a few things we need to talk about, both positive and negative, but in general, yeah, when this goes back tomorrow, it's not a good day. It's way too much fun. So, overall, what do we think about it? Is this something you should own and drive and buy? Is it a good alternative to say like a Porsche Cayman or some other sporty car? That's what we're gonna find out on this episode of rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So believe it or not, it's taken us a while to come to some conclusions on this Audi TT RS. Not because it's bad, but mostly because it's good, but we have some questions about where it falls and a lot of it has to do with pricing and functionality. So right off the bat, the regular TT Audi, Audi, T, sorry, the regular Audi TT, it's a good vehicle. TTS, better. TT RS, Yes, absolutely. When this thing pulled up in our driveway in this mica black, oh, yeah, seek your doctor for erections lasting more than four hours. That's not a superlative. Uh, it actually is really, it just looked amazing. Uh, let's see, I still have the video of when it rolled in and kind of like an initial reaction. I'll roll that in here for you, but man, it is like, when it came, when it was delivered and after it had been detailed and it's all nicely polished and everything, I mean, it, it is it is Vader's helmet. That's what this thing looks like. It looks wicked, mean, menacing, just absolutely badass. Would I want to own it in this color? No. I've owned black cars. I hate owning black cars. They're a pain in the ass to keep them clean. But that's not to say it doesn't look good and, man, yeah. Inside, hey, it's exactly what you'd expect from an Audi. The interior is, is very well done. The materials are excellent. Love the stitching in the seat. There's lots of carbon in here, which I could give or take. Uh, the controls are, you know, good. They're exactly kind of where you want them. The one thing this does have, though, or maybe does not have, is a uh, display right here in the center. That's gone. It's all nicely styled up here and everything is here for the driver. Now, is that a bad thing? I don't know. It gets, with everything stashed uh, in the instrument cluster, and yes, this is the, the nice one with the, with the full LED, 12.3 inch LED. Yeah, it's, it's great, but there's just so much in there and trying to, all the controls that are integrated. I almost want some of that separated, okay? it's. It's, it's only at the end of the week that I'm comfortable with where everything is and can find things. And yeah, it's just, it's a bit much. Front and center, the highlight of this vehicle is the two and a half liter five cylinder in this, in this vehicle. And man, does it sound like the glory days of Group B rallying with Audi. Now, I grew up, you know, in the uh, in the 80s, watching Group B rally on ESPN. Yeah, I know, that's a shock, isn't it? But watching, you know, John Buffum and Michelle Mouton and Walter Roll and Stig Bloomquist and, you know, and the like, just rock and roll in the uh, Audi Quattro and then the S1. And this being a Quattro and this being a five-cylinder with a turbo, Harkens back to those days. It gives you a little bit of nostalgia. Is it anything like those vehicles? No, but you know, you kind of get that little bit of, of nostalgia if you're of a certain age. Um, but the two and a half liter five cylinder is 400, and, 400 horsepower, and I want to say 354 or 364 on the torque, and it's good. Um, yeah, shove from about 2500 on up to redline, excellent. Um, laggy? No, not really. Uh, just feels good. It doesn't, you know, like big V8 torque immediately. No, but that, that's fine. It's a different character and kind of like it. Uh, we've done some, uh, some launches on this thing because it does have launch control 
and it'll pull almost a G off the hit. It it's got some it's got some pull, and to about 330 400 feet, it's still pulling over half a G, about six tenths of a G, uh, and then it kind of lets up a little bit. It's quick. Zero to 60, uh, according to the factory, is 3.6. I'd say that's probably about right. Let me throw a wild card at you as something to think about. And this will probably annoy pretty much everyone, which is precisely the reason to make this point. Audi TT RS or Nissan GTR? Hear me out. Especially the early early GTRs, the 2008s to about 11s, 400 right around 400 horsepower, and torque is in in the, in a similar area. This weighs about 500 pounds, four to 500 pounds less, about 500 pounds less. Uh, GTR is in the 3,800 pound range. This is a little over 3,300 pounds. All wheel drive, you know, flappy paddles, launch controls. This is probably a faster car than the GTR. Now, JDM fanboy doesn't want to hear about it. I think this looks better than a GTR. It is more involving to drive than a GTR because I have driven a GTR on a racetrack. And what this costs new and what you're going to buy a GTR for used, absolutely, this would come out ahead. A new GTR, forget about it. This thing is miles ahead, at least on price and in performance. It's probably close enough as makes no difference. Now, this is a 2 plus 2. Uh, the back seats in this thing are a joke. I mean, they are a joke. There's, you can get... Uh, maybe a thin paperback book between the back of the front seat and the front of the back and, and then where your legs would go. I mean, it's no more than half an inch. It's a joke. So it's there for insurance purposes only. Uh, can you put anything back there? Uh, you might be able to put a child seat back there until they're about two. Getting them in and out is a whole different issue. Actually, not that bad, but, you know. So this has different uh, driver select modes. It has... Uh, individual comfort dynamic and normal in comfort it's actually not bad uh, in dynamic which is what we spend most of the time in it's firm without being obnoxious really wouldn't want it being any more firm than what it is uh, put it into comfort and it does soften it nicely not overly it's not overly soft but it's a very comfortable ride and that's really well done because the tires on this are a 30 section series uh, 20 inch tire. I want to say they're 265 3020s, but I'll annotate that if that's not correct. The sidewall on it is literally three fingers. That's the sidewall. So the fact that the ride quality is that good with that little sidewall in comfort mode. Man, Audi, Audi engineers, their suspension engineers, deserve a, a pat on the back for making that happen. So the big bogey in the room with the Audi TT RS is the price. Not the base price, but more price is tested. And this has got a number of options. And the uh, Monroney is in the trunk area, so I can't run down everything for it. But the base price is 65, roughly 65.5. Okay, that's not an unreasonable amount of money for this vehicle, especially at the performance level the quality of materials, etc. I, I no issues with that. But as tested with uh, driver performance pack and carbon trim and other bits and bobs on here, um, I'll roll in a price. I'll roll in a picture of the Monroney so you can see all the options here. Comes out to $80,000, $80,200. Now that is a stretch for this vehicle, only because you are getting into say, used 911 territory, and not very old used 911 territory, like two, three, like off, two year, three year off lease 911 territory. And this compared to a 911, well, it's 911 all day. Interestingly enough, and we'll thank Peter DiLorenzo for pointing this out when he had this very particular vehicle about two months ago now, I guess it is. Um, he priced a 
uh, Porsche Cayman S versus an Audi TT RS, this Audi TT RS. And they pretty much track dollar for dollar when you start adding in the options and things like that. And that's pretty interesting. So you have to ask yourself, Audi TT RS or Porsche Cayman S? That's a much more difficult uh, argument to have or a different conversation to have because different dynamics, true mid-engine sports car. This GT car, sure. Is the Cayman a GT car? Sure, it can be. No reason it can't be. Um, you know, cachet and a few perceptions and other things like that starts to become an interesting conversation, right? So, um, yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting one to think about. Fuel economy on this, uh, I don't know. Uh, what, well, I know what the EPA says. What we're getting, I don't know, because again, we've said trying to find things in the instrument cluster, it's either not there or it's hiding really well. Um, EPA rates it at 19 city, 29 highway, 22 combined. Sure, um, not unreasonable. It's fine. Uh, that feels with the amount of driving and what it says we have for range. That feels about about right. I don't think you're buying this worrying too much about fuel economy though so uh, but it handles well it drives well it's very comfortable the stereo system in here is good it's a uh, Bang & Olsen system it's not the best B&O system we've heard but you put good quality music into it and it sounds very nice streaming you know Sirius XM radio sounds eh, it's okay but you know nothing to get too excited about so overall Audi TT RS absolutely this is, it's a very, very compelling, uh, compelling car. Enjoyed it. Really don't want to see this one go back. We tried to, we actually, I actually did call and uh, see if I could stretch this for another couple days, but no, uh, that wasn't happening because as you would imagine in the local press fleet here, this is in demand. Uh, so we've put our miles on it. Would we like to put more miles on it? Absolutely, but that's fine. Uh, Pretty much the entire, this is like one day or partial part of a day, actually it did rain earlier today. Pretty much the entire time we've had this vehicle, it's rained every day. And it does well in the rain. Traction control is, is great. No worries. It's a really good vehicle. I like it a lot. Is it half an R8? No. Is it a very fun car, enjoyable car, reasonable value? Yes, as long as you don't start getting ridiculous on your options list. Yeah, go and drive this thing. It's it's every bit as good as everyone else says it is. And that's a very pleasant surprise for me because half the time these things never live up to the hype. This one does. Hey, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like us, give us a thumbs up twice. Like that smash button and uh, share, subscribe. And we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.